Hey there, this is Jacob Osborne on the campus of Huntington University. You're listening to Rooted. Make sure you subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes, and you can catch us every Thursday evening at 7 on 105.5 WQHU. And as always, you can stream Forrester Radio anytime, anywhere on ForresterRadio.com or through the TuneIn app. Today I'm sitting down with... Megan Wright. ...to talk to her about the India J-Term trip that she took last year and talk to her about short-term missions. Why did you want to go on this J-Term trip? Yeah, so I actually knew about the trip prior to even becoming a student at Huntington University. Um, I had kind of heard of it, like, on my visit days and stuff back when I was, like, a uh, junior or senior in high school. And I thought, you know, like, that's an incredible opportunity. Um, I would love to do something like that someday. Um, and then the opportunity came around, actually, when I was a sophomore in college. I was able to um, attend the trip. So it was something that I had wanted to do for a long time. I really felt God leading me to India. So that, that's why I decided to sign up for the trip. All right. What did you do during this trip? Because I've heard... A little bit, but what did what all did you do? Yeah, so we were in India for three weeks. Um, so during that time there, we did a lot of cultural activities, just kind of learning about um, how Indian people live, what kind of things they believe, like Indian thought processes and stuff like that. So we view, uh, we visited like a lot of sites in India, cultural sites. We went to a Hindu temple and just walked around there and kind of like saw like religion in India as well as like a mosque and a few other like religious historical sites. Um, We made a trip up to New Delhi where we visited the Taj Mahal and just kind of experienced the crazy big city life that is in New Delhi. And we also did quite a bit of missions work while we were there after we had spent time learning about the culture. We worked with the main organization that we worked with is called the Home of Love. And that's actually an all-girls orphanage. They have about 100, 120 girls that live with them. Um, And many of these girls are brought in from, like, rural areas. They live out in the villages. Um, And many of them have lost their parents or have been taken out of abusive situations um, where they can gain an education at the Home of Love. They have housing, food, and all the things that they would need to prosper. So when we were there, we put on a VBS with them. Um, We did spend one day while they were in school, and we got to kind of help out with their school that day, and that was incredible. And another organization that we spent time at is Madras Christian Council for Social Social Services. (laughs) Try saying that ten times fast, but we spent a lot of time there. I don't want to. I don't want to try that. (laughs) We spent a lot of time there as well, Um, and they do quite a bit as well. They they help rescue girls who have been victims of sex trafficking, and they equip them with, like, job skills and rehabilitate them to be able to go back out into the world and be successful. And then they they go with them to take them back to the villages where they originally came from. They also have an orphanage there with um, children, once again, taken out of abusive situations or if they don't have parents anymore. And they also work with the elderly as well. Um, A lot of elderly in India are abandoned on the streets when their um, family cannot take care of them anymore. So... MCCSS takes them in as well. So we got to do a lot of work there, um, working with the children and the elderly and the women that have been rescued. Do you wish you could have done more? Done more for, with the... For the people that you met or, like, any, like, organization? Um, I mean, of course, you always wish you can do more. I mean, we were only there for three weeks, so, so there was only so much time. But we did spend a lot of time at both organizations, Um, And the Indian government does make it kind of difficult to work with organizations that kind of have Christian motives with a very Mm -hmm. Hindu centric government. So it was there were like we were restricted in the amount of time that we could spend at some of the organizations. But we did spend as much time as we possibly could. And we did as much as we possibly could with the time that we were given. Right. What was it like working in India, which is a mostly Hindu country and Hindu centric government. Yeah, so there are a lot of Christians in India, um, just because there's a lot of people in India. So there is this, there is a lot of Christians there. We did visit um, a Catholic church that actually has services every Sunday. So that seems like a lot of people, but it's a very small percentage when you take into account the amount of people that actually live in India. Um, so there definitely were Christians there, but the government is very opposed to Christianity. Um, as you've recently heard, there's been like Christian organizations. Um, 
that like you can sponsor children and stuff have been kicked out of India because of the government now. Um, so that was kind of difficult. Like when people asked why we were there, we were just kind of like, oh, we're like on a school tour trip. You know, like we didn't want to tell them that we were there on a mission trip because we could have gotten in some trouble for that. But um, yeah, so it was like we did kind of have to like stay under the radar in some circumstances and stuff. But there are definitely Christians in India. It's a lot more acceptable in the south part where we were at than it would have been if we were in the northern part. Has this changed the way you think about, like, I know you've gone from a first world, like the United States, to India, which is a third world country that is impoverished and just... I think I get what you're going at there. Um, so, yeah, it definitely changes you. There's there's no way that 